Hey, what's up, fam? This is Grant Skeldon, and you're joining the Next Up podcast. If you're a parent trying to raise the next generation, a pastor trying to reach the next generation, or an employer just trying to retain the next generation, but especially if you're a young leader who wants to see revival in the next generation, then this is the podcast for you. We are going to hear from some of the most anointed, humble young leaders of our time and learn from the mentors of our day. This isn't going to be a place where you hear a lot of the negative stuff about the next generation. This is a place for those that have regained confidence that God is on the move in the future of the church. Let's see who's next up. On today's episode of Next Up, Will and I interview Zach Love, who's an unbelievable artist out of Indianapolis. He's moving to LA where he has for years now, over a decade, been sitting on thousands of pieces of art from fashion to murals to uh, just physical, creative installations. He's got so many forms of art that he's really hasn't shown at all. And he talks about it for the very first time on this episode. And we also interview Trent Jackson. Trent is the founder of Jesus Loves You, uh, the fashion brand. I'm telling you, if you don't know it, it's been around. You just haven't seen it. But this is a clothing brand that a lot of believers across the nation have engaged in. It's gone, kind of come out of nowhere and God's given a, given a lot of favor to uh, Trent and the work that he's doing. And why I think this episode, and I'm excited about it, is because so often we train pastors to be missionaries to the world and to be communicators to the next generation. But we find ourselves in a time when the next generation often isn't going to church. And so it's just so important that we train up the creatives of our day, the musicians of our day, the the we want the lyrics that the next generation is hearing, the the movies that they're watching, the fashion or the athletes that they're seeing, these people that express uh, faith and goodwill in culture to be grounded, uh, full of devotion to the Lord, and and bold in their witness. And so I'm just, it's a great conversation of hearing. Um, just how these young leaders are being intentional and evangelistic and just pioneers in the space of creativity. And so if you're someone who's outside of the church, but you want to navigate it well, or maybe you just want to hear from some unique voices that God's using in some unique ways, then uh, get ready because next up is Zach Love and Trent Jackson. So Zach, when I first met you, like this must have been like three or four years ago, you were sharing how all your art, all your paintings are now public. Absolutely. People don't know it, right? And My guy, move that mic up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, move that mic closer to you. Move it. You're going to you're gonna walk. I'm scared, dude. No, no, bro. I was reading a book um, by Henry Nouwen, and he talks about how Van Gogh, he hid his painting almost most his life, and most people didn't see it until after he died. And he talks about how artists and creatives – should know how to guard their creativity so that the fire burns so that when they open the steam bath it has actually something to offer <laughs> so i'm just wondering what was your intentionality of making the art hide for a season yo bro what up zach love <laughs> hey <laughs> dude thanks for uh, thanks for bringing that up man when i first met you i noticed your smile and it's still beautiful today so keep those <laughs> teeth going baby uh <laughs> uh yeah, Van Gogh's dope. He was one of the artists I really liked, and he was the one who, uh, you know, he ended up ending his life. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Cut his cut his ear off, right? Eating paint and stuff. You know, he's a little crazy too. Mm -hmm. But that's me eating paint, bro. I'm just kidding. Um, no, but I think that it's very unique because uh, I relate a lot to Van Gogh. His mm -hmm. brother was able to. Uh, send him into his career, you know, and there was a lot of tension between his brother and his wife because of the money that was going toward uh, toward Van Gogh, you know, and mm -hmm. Van Gogh felt the pressure of that. And then when there was tension in their family, that created tension between him and his brother, which created a lot of different things. People don't know a lot about Van Gogh, so mm -hmm. I appreciate you bringing him up. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely relate a lot to him. So when you talk about incubation and curation to develop a language, that's what I've been doing for a very long time. And you can't 
take something out to the world that they're going to shape. You have to take something that's been shaped within you to the world that no one can mm. mess with. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So that's why I believe that I had to wait in silence to be still in silence because I was like at the top of the fashion game for a while about to sign in New York. You know, I had tickets to next to Paris Hilton, bro. Woo, woo. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I was like, hey, I'm about to do this, baby. You know, about to be shooting for all these big campaigns because once you get signed, you can get those 100K deals, you know? Stacks on stacks, racks on racks, baby looking fresh like him. So... <laughs> You know what I mean? Nah, we laughing. Nah. Uh, but yeah, man. So I just like understood that you have to be, you know, you have to maintain a place of intimacy with Christ because the world, like, it, you think about it. I don't want, I don't know how deep you want me to get, bro. No, this is good, yeah. bro. This how, is good. You want me to go deeper? No, keep or what? Going, yeah. Okay, I don't, because I'm like trying to keep it to that 90 cut, 90 <laughs> cut, 90 cut, <laughs> cut. Uh, anyway, but yeah, so it's just like a whole thing where it's like whenever you put something out there, like for me, right? If I'm, if I have pink, bubblegum little balls right and they're really cool and they have little smiley faces on them you know because i love smiley faces and i put that out there in the world and i start developing like all these pyramids out of like balls that glue together and i start putting them all over the world people are like he's the pyramid ball guy you know <laughs> that sounds so weird sorry guys <laughs> but it's just like once you put that out there you get labeled huh? once you get labeled you get put into a category once you get put into a category you get compartmentalized once you get compartmentalized you have to fight to breathe and to let people know who you really are so for me mm -hmm. i had to develop all of this originality all this creativity in a place of incubation and curation to understand a language a language is something that people will identify that is a, that is aligned with you when you hear my voice unless i'm like hey what up you know what i'm saying yeah. but like when you hear my normal voice which i don't do all the time because i like to play characters <laughs> whatever why, but why it, do you like to do that dude because i'm a creative bro you know what i mean it's like hey what's up man how you doing buddy you know it's just fun bro you mm. know to to figure out how god created us to be original and unique and mm. like if you can't flex on how you you know arrive in different places and express yourself then you know you're not believing that god can allow you to be the highest form of whatever self he is calling you to be as an expression you know what i'm saying i know yeah. it sounds crazy yeah. but it's like mm. i just I love to. That's what creatives do, man. They freaking adapt, bro. They have fun. So anyway, back to just like, yeah, the incubation and creation of your language, why I remain in silent, why I maintain silence, why I kept it like, you know, in the underground. Bro, that's that OG status. If you can be at that place where you're so dependent on God, walking by that type of faith where he's got to show up for it to happen, then you know that the language is being dependent on him because faith is immersed in that ingredient, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like if faith is immersed in the ingredient of what you're creating, then that originality that's being pursued, being tailored, being created, has something on it has a it has this this spunk on it has a spin on it has a zest on it has a zeal on it has this fervor on it has this everything i'm going to a million words but it's got all this stuff on it to where once you put it out there it's so intrinsically woven into everything that god is calling it to be that nothing can nobody can mess with it i want to say a different word but you know what i'm saying nobody can mess with it you got any thoughts on what he's just sharing wow um yeah i really like uh the incubation to curation yeah dude incubation that, creation of your language yeah yeah sure. that's fire and i think that you know those those places that you kind of get locked in as a creative where it's like as soon as you do one thing and like you want it to do good you know you want it to pop off you want it to do its thing but if it does too much of that and people start like identifying it as that, that like, that's what he is yep. like zach's the smiley face guy and it's like then everything you design has to have a smiley face or you're swapping up exactly and so it's like this this struggle and i i get you know i just found out earlier that you've kind of been like keeping all the like art you know just to you but i get that now because it's like mine is so public and clothing and stuff like that it's like you know, we, we push that a lot that it's like as soon as I do something that's like outside of that, hmm. that rut, you know, that I've kind of dug myself in. And it's it's weird because it's like God has allowed that to happen. Like it wouldn't it wouldn't be what I was known for creatively if his hand wasn't on it because a lot of people wouldn't know about it. So it's like we obviously want it to be successful. But then when it is, it's like. You know, how do we do how do we do more? And I don't know if that's just in the Christian space that I feel like, you know, it's 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 weird for me. Like I have a Christian clothing line, a faith based clothing line, and it's like, what if I want to speak on mental health? Hmm. I'll get comments and be like, the boxes that you're talking about and the compartmentalized that hmm. you're talking about where it's like, Hey man, we're here for Jesus. We're not here for, you know, 
the mental health mm-hmm. side. So it's like this this battle almost of like, okay, like how do I stay broad? Mm-hmm. How do I stay open? Because that's what a creator is. It's like, you know. Absolute, bro. Yeah. I love your heart, dude. Thanks for sharing, man. Yeah, you too. I want to kiss your head. <laughs> I what, A question that I had, obviously I'm not a creative, but I produce a creative sermon every week, right? Because yeah. I'm a pastor. And for me, I see that as art, right? So I'm working on it. I'm praying on it. And the temptation for me, because I'm always, every week I have to produce something. And yeah. ready, ready or not, I have to share it. And the temptation for me is to become an echo instead of being a voice, mm-hmm. right? Because when you're always producing and you're always making it public, you're kind of, you're pushed on the speed of need. Yeah. Uh, the, you, you have a bottom line, you have a, you have a, a certain timeline you have to put things out for. So for me, I've realized kind of like you were saying, Zach, I mean, you're on another level, which I think is, which I'm getting blessed by, is like you've had the privilege to hold it back. So yeah. It's just burning. The fire is hot. The mm-hmm. temperature is boiling. Versus other people, when you open the door to the steam bath, the heat goes out. Mm-hmm. You close it, the heat goes, open it again, it goes out. But I think you keeping that closed for years, that thing's 14, baby. 14 years. I've been working on this for 2009. That's what I'm saying, bro. The yeah. world, the world's about to get shocked. Yeah. Be ready. <laughs> <laughs> be, but you can't you can't just come out with something though you know what i'm saying you can't just be like yo i'm here boom you know you have to develop a land you have to develop your language like mm-hmm. you know you have to understand what god's calling you to but then you also have to like take time because the thing is is like if you just launch a brand and you're like boom here's the art boom here's the visuals boom here's all these beautiful women boom here's these beautiful men here's da 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 it's like yeah you can have all this stuff you can have the dopest cuts the dopest scenes the dopest features the dopest you know you can get a bunch of people that come in and represent it brand ambassadors all this kind of stuff you know what i'm saying but it's like dude if people don't understand the community that you're trying to grow the love you're trying to show the message you're trying to paint all these different things then you're gonna be so interested in becoming this public face that everybody's like yo that dude's dope he did this collab with them he did this collab with them and your whole brand is going to be ridden off of all this stuff that just looks appealing Mm, and god wasn't trying to be appealing dude he was og status original he never did miracles the same freaking way bro Mm. so all i'm trying to say is it's like it's all about the message it's all about like i spent 14 years i'm ready to come out i got over 10,000 pieces of art bro ready to drop i'll do five today you know what i mean seven today maybe 14 every day i do at least eight but it's like you know it's like one of these things where you know whenever you're whenever you're gonna drop this stuff whenever you're gonna come out you don't just be like yo boom here it all is right you say no god took all god took 14 years with me for me to be able to develop such a love and such an aesthetic and such a originality a cadence with him that i now know that for me to now unveil this to the world it has to start with a simple message of love and that's what my my message is love it up you know zach love love it up hug heart to heart i do a smiley face on everything Hmm. why did i do a smiley face i did a smiley face because i heard a story one time about a guy who jumped off the like san francisco bridge is brooklyn bridge or what's the bridge out there in san francisco whatever the golden gate bridge Yeah. yeah homie he jumped off of this thing and he, you know, committed suicide and the police went to his house and they searched his house being like, yo, uh, what the heck? Why did this guy commit suicide? And they found a note that read, if someone will smile at me today, I won't jump. You know mm. what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, I'm putting a smiley face on everything so I can share the story with everyone so that people will smile, you know? So it's just like if my whole art was driven by that smiley face and not that message, people would be driven to a, to a visual when they need to be driven to something that's going to be transformative, something that's going to impact them, something that's going to actual shift people into a place of love, into a place of connection, a place of unity. You know, that's mm-hmm. what my body's called. That's what my art's called, one body. And when we talk about like originality, getting locked into a specific place, not that I'm yeah. trying to like take over or drive or take this will right now or say too much or whatever, I'm fired up. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Bro. But it's, it's like having 14 years of incubation curation yeah i was doing photography traveled around the world with a headless mannequin for two years said we're asking people where they find love like did all this different stuff built the websites out i would spend three years on different projects some of them you know eight years whatever and i would do the whole project get it ready to completion ready to launch and then god would say hey next thing next thing why would he do that because i never wanted to be labeled as like zach is this zach is that zach. look we're talking right now about something yeah it's art but it's it's in a different context 
context. Like we weren't, Grant was like, yo, are you going to talk about this stuff? I was like, yeah, dude, I'll talk about it. Like this is our first time even talking about it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't know, you just have to be, not, I do know, you have to be patient. You have to, you have to develop such a language, such a love you know, when they talk about the Eros love, that like sexual love, you know what I'm saying? Dude, there's an intimacy with God that will surpass any form of desire, any mm. form of desire. It will surpass it. When you are in that presence, it's like there's no, I don't desire anyone. I don't desire a girl. I don't even desire myself. I just desire him and to create something that is so woven in love that it is, that it is so connected to something that no one's ever experienced before. And that's like, to me, what art is, what art is intended to be about, what originality is intended to be about is this connection that is so divine, so aligned, so steadfast, so encompassing, so immersive, so interactive, so loving, so beautiful. You know what I mean? That it's yeah, like, man. You fiend for that moment. You know, we got all these guys fiending for pornography and all this bull crap, taking all their sexual energy and putting it into something that like depletes their imagination. And I believe that what's wrong today is people lose their imagination because of pornography, because of sex, because mm. all these things. That's what's ruining imagination. Mm. It's ruining it. Mm. And I think that the greatest imagination, the greatest creativity that you can connect with your cadence with God is on is intimacy, getting in a secret place, locking yourself up and just being like, yo God, I'm gonna start drawing today and I'm gonna draw every day. Have your freaking way. I don't know what this is gonna look like, but I'm gonna keep going after because you told me I've read that the stories at 10,000 hours amounts to something so I sure as heck know that 10,000 <laughs> you know 10,000 hours with you is going to amount to something you know oh, what I mean baby good. so I was that's like good. yo if the world can say this and I know God who created this world and I'm trying to be a creator I better tap into that in the deepest levels you know what I'm saying mm. so shoots dude you know that's just where it started I was bro, just bro this like, is this is what you call 14 years of knowledge <laughs> Yeah. 14 years right there, bro. Coming out of the cave. Coming out, bro. I'm ready, bro. Put me on, dog. Put me on. <laughs> <laughs> so what I love about all three of y'all is um, your heart for the loss, but especially I feel like y'all's hearts like break for the loss. There's something about, um, I don't know, creatives. And, and you guys are, I'm almost always seeing you with unbelievers. Um, I think even I've seen y'all kind of get emotional, both of you guys, uh, when it comes to just a hurting world that kind of gets uh, maybe forgotten or written off. How does art and especially like your lifestyle or like, tell us about like your heart for the lost, basically like your heart for those that are far from God. What any, anything around that I'd love to hear. Yeah, bro. I think I just, for me, it's like, I, I'm not, I'm not viewing them like first through the lens of loss or non-believer. I'm viewing them through the lens of probably a little sad, probably a little depressed, oh. hmm. probably, you know, a little disconnected from other people, probably not being able to, like, talk intimately with other sure. people. And it's like, those are all, like, the things. I, obviously, as a Christian, put that in the bubble of, like, my relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. But those are, like, individual characteristics that are, like, go hand in hand with my walk with Jesus and also just random stuff. And so whenever I, I think about that, I'm just like, man, I want them to experience this. Yeah. And um, I've, it's been really cool being in my position um, because sometimes people will come around just because they see the success. They don't know that it's, you know, anything Jesus there. But it's like, as long as I can get them in the building, like I'll, I'll allow stuff. I'll allow like the success of something. I'll allow like the follower account to get people in proximity as mm -hmm. long as I know that whenever they are, like they're gonna experience like what my life actually is, mm -hmm. you know, and why it's even at that point. Um, but I've also learned that you can't be the Christian and also the one that sucks at whatever they're doing. So it's like, if you're gonna be a Christian that op operates in a secular space, you gotta be like, you know, kick butt at it. Mm -hmm. You gotta, because people will test that. Because mm -hmm. if you come into a room and everybody is like, you know, on top of their crap and like w operating out of excellence and you come in the Christian and you also come in the one that's operating in me me med mediocrity, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if you come in operating in that, it's like, oh, bro, this dude's corny, you yeah. know? So it's like, I, I understand that. I got to operate at the top of my game if I even want to like have a place in those rooms. Yeah. Mm. What would you say is uh, unchurched creatives thinking of the the church and Christians when it comes to approaching creativity, both y'all? Unnecessary. 
like I, I through their minds I would I would think they would be like dude why I'll go get you know lunch with with my friends if I want to do like community or something like that you know that's as far as like people that are unchurched and they're also like think about stuff in a creative mindset like and I, I think that you know comes into a lot of factors but you know ultimately it's how they've seen it operated how they've seen like people that are like deep deep in the church world you know um they probably look at that i know people that i've particularly had conversations with will be like yeah bro i just don't see like what's what's the point of it you know what's the point of going word up y'all <laughs> uh yeah dude <laughs> Uh, man, I freaking love people, bro. You know what I'm saying? I just love them, dude. I mean, cause they're who I like, they're who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like the only divider is just the fact that I haven't loved them well enough yet. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. Period. I mean, I have so many stories and testimonies of people who are like lesbian, whatever, pansexual, who knows, dude. And it's like, I don't even see a label. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't matter what you say you are, you're claiming whatever, bro. I'm not hearing you. I'm just loving you. You know what I'm saying? I feel like people use labels to create blockades of barriers, you know? Yeah. There's no barriers, bro. I don't care what you say. It's like, yo, I'm this, yo, I'm that. I don't care what you say you are, my dog. You are love to me and I'm love to you. And let's synchronize. Let's let's swim in this pond together. Let's understand each other because I'm motivated by the fact that you are different than me. And the fact that you're different than me means that there's something that I'm going to gain from understanding you. People desire to be known. That's period. All people want to be is known. To mm -hmm. know me is to love me. That's what intimacy is. Into me you see. You know what I'm saying? So for me, bro, I mean, it goes into all different levels of, of, of this conversation and communication. But like my boy Wayne Wonder, he's this homie who roams the street of my hometown Mooresville, Indiana. Shout out to the pioneers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mooresville pioneers, baby. We drive our tractors, dude, to freaking, you know, to school. It's that kind of town, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you talk about some different people, bro. I'll be rocking a cowboy hat or, you know, hanging out with Kodak Black. What's up, Gremlin? You know what I'm saying? So, for real, though, it's, like, diverse. I remember I'd be in Mooresville hanging out with this homie, Wayne Wonder, who's on the streets. His dad's beating over the head with a bottle, and he's, like... Yeah, he's in, in and out of jail. I'm the only person he can connect with just because I never judged him. He's driving around, you know, high as a kite, just wrecking his bike. And I'm like, bro, you need a new bike, dude? You know what I'm saying? Like, just helping him out, just seeing what this dude loves. And because of what yeah. he loves, I love it too. When you love what people love, they will love you. <laughs> like, it's just, it doesn't mean that you got to, like, go that way or whatever. But, dude, freaking get into what people love, man. That's, like, yeah. the most beautiful thing. Like, you love your grandma. I love your grandma. Let's talk about your grandma. I mean, dude, like, whatever. Who cares? Like, they are a person, and they're the most beautiful creation that has ever existed in all of existence because they are there in front of you. Like, each one of you are so freaking beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And we're all so different, but the way that we represent God as Christians is how we freaking love one another. Are you freaking yeah. kidding me? Yeah. And so I'm just like one of those cats where it's like, yo, if you see me judging homie because he's different— Freaking slap me in the face, dog, because, like, that ain't right. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus was the one who everybody rebuked because of how much he loved. I was talking to mm. my homie the other day. The Dude, people don't even realize this. We've heard it for a million years, a thousand years, since the beginning of time, whatever, however long Christianity has been around. Sorry, I don't know exact facts. I am an artist. All I'm saying <laughs> is it's like— Homie, back in the day, he's walking around no shoes. Freaking, he probably took off his shirt, got a little bit of sun sometimes, too. You never know. All I'm saying is that Sabbath day when nobody's healing, he's healing. You know, he's like, nothing is going to limit the way that love pursues an individual who is about to reflect love in a way just as much as I am. Like, he yeah. saw the belief that someone could do far greater works than he could do, and he was so hungry for that, bro. That's what I do when I look at you. I don't mm -hmm. look at you and hear you say, I'm not an artist. I look at you and hear you say, God loves you. What he did in me, he can deposit in you. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Do not claim anything that doesn't align with, God, with what God already spoke over you. You are an artist. Do not, And that's the thing. Like, Christian 
Christians live in a capped lifestyle. So many times they're like, mm. I'm not this, I'm not that, where the world says you can be anything. Mm. And we need to encourage Christians, dude, you can be anything. Mm. You can. Just do it in a representation mm. of what people will encounter and what people encounter will bring them to a level of love that exists in such an amazing way that is unprecedented in its forgiveness and its grace and its non-judgment. And because of that, they're like, People are captivated by that, dude. I don't know how to say it any other way, but it's just like, get the freaking labels off. Get the like, do this, do that, whatever. You got to be this to be to be here, to be there, whatever, dude. Like, freaking just love people, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, for me too, like, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. A lot of my friends were in gangs and just, just the crazy life, you know? So after I got, I became a Christian, it's just, you just, you just hang out. You just be normal. And you just, and even when they found out, yo, he stopped smoking weed, he stopped selling drugs, he stopped banging and all that. They're like, when we hang out, they're like, dude, you're still the same. You're still the same, bro. Like, I love being around you. And they joke around me. They like drop F-bombs or they're smoking weed or doing yay. They're like, yo, is this cool with you, Pastor? I'm like, dude, do you, man. Just don't even worry about it. And then months later, they hit me up when they're down low. hundred percent. They hit me up. They're like, consistency, bro. They're like, I need to talk to you, man. Like my life is falling apart. And when I'm looking at you, like you look so happy. Mm. You look, you look so content. And I tell them, look, I'm still messed up. I have sad days, but this is what God's done for me. And I realize is humanizing our faith. Like God became man. He could have came as an angel. He could have came as a, like a 12 feet archangel. He's like, no, I'm going to come as a baby. I'm going to walk amongst you. I'm going to be like you. I'm going to cook you breakfast. I was just reading John 21. After he resurrects, he's like, hey, come over here. I cook some breakfast for you. You know, as an Asian guy, I saw he made some sushi for them. You know what I mean? Because he got some fish, right? I was like, he was so normal. Jesus just ate and spent time with them. You know what I mean? So for me, that's been like, the biggest thing is like normalizing my faith as a yeah. regular human and showing them, you know what I mean? Yeah, nothing has to do with like two big things, consistency and uh, also whenever, what is what is the word? Discernment. So consistency and discernment. Um, consistency just in your lifestyle and just being there, but discernment and knowing when to push Jesus mm-hmm. and when to just be you Mm -hmm. because I think that a misconception amongst Christians that are in a circle with non-believers is that you have to constantly be on your toes waiting for the second when when can I throw Philippians 413 in this Mm -hmm. conversation you know you know and it's like I know I'm gonna get a chance to in a minute in a minute in a minute wait wait. oh yeah bro so I just want to say Jesus loves you you know Mm -hmm. and it's like (laughs) <laughs> it's like, bro, if you're always on your toes, that's going to be seen. Mm-hmm. And that's that, dude, it's it's easier to just ask God for discernment on when to interject that stuff. And those due to the consistency of your character and you just like reaching out, hanging out, doing whatever, being cool with, you know, them being them. Mm-hmm. You'll have that discernment of like, OK, now is that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're enjoying these conversations, y'all, let's hang out. Like, let's get together because it's November 10th and 11th. We're having the Next Gen Summit. It's going to be in the heart of the city in downtown Nashville, where we'll be gathering young leaders from all over the nation. And so if you're hungry, if you're sincere, if you want to see revival in the next generation, then come join like-minded leaders that want to see that. And also, if you want to see what is God doing in the next generation, then join us too, because we're going to have some space for those that want to invest and believe and mentor those that are coming up today. This gathering is not going to be like things you've been to before. It's going to be the least conference conference you've ever been to. Next Gen Summit is full of experiences, learning from leaders in the church, but also especially leaders in the culture. We'll have experiences where you're learning from tattoo artists that uh, co-owners of soccer teams, one of the top writers in country music, sneaker designers, DJs. It's a unique place to learn how God is moving in other places all over the nation, but also You'll learn from voices you know. There will be guys like Jonathan Pecluda, Matt Chandler, David Platt, Rebecca Lyons, Alicia Britt-Sholey. These leaders also will be accompanied with, we want to raise up young voices. Like, who is God raising up with new perspective and a new message for our time? 
And so you'll hear from guys like Tyler Burns. And, and so there will be topics like discipleship, deconstruction, mental health, revival, spiritual warfare, holiness, things that are going on in the world, things that are going on in, within us in the church. But you'll hear from like a battle rapper like Street Hems or a theologian like Joel Mutamale, an author like Faith Cho, or maybe even a demonologist, uh, one of those like Adam Bly. It's going to be a unique lineup, but it's going to be relevant conversations. And honestly, it's not all about the learning too. We want to meet you. We want to connect with you. We want you to find friends and people that can be brothers and sisters in the faith over the next decade as we see and hopefully can even help start a revival in our nation. So join us November 10th and 11th at thinkmedia.com slash events and sign up soon because this is going to be a very unique gathering of our day. What do you think is like the inner monologue of the person who has good intentions, who's like, okay, how do I fit this in? How do I turn this into a gospel conversation um, to the inner monologue of someone who's like, I guess, a little bit more at ease, walking in the spirit, walking in friendship, yeah. and shifts into that. What do, what do you think they're thinking or how, what's their, their mind going through? I think that... Uh, like the distinction. Yeah. I think really it's a, a mindset that has probably existed either for a long time because I either see it in Christians who have been Christians forever, you know, the born in church type people or the people that are just immediately become a Christian and they're like, hot, I got to tell everybody. Mm -hmm. Those are normally the two people that I, that I see that are like always like antsy to say mm -hmm. something. And I want to say like that's not a negative quality. It's just one that has to be trained. Mm -hmm. Um I think the the inner dialogue that's going on is like they've probably been involved with a church or a ministry that kind of keeps um, salvations as a scorecard. Mm. You know, it's like a high churn rate. We got to get over as many people as possible. You know, we gotta mm. we gotta make sure that we fill up. You know, as many this many we have a quota two hundred and fifty baptisms every month or whatever mm. it might mm. be. And it's like they live in that mindset whenever people in, in like the real world that aren't aren't Christians and aren't used to, you know, that lifestyle, mm -hmm. it's very organic. It's mm -hmm. like out of nowhere it, when that happens mm -hmm. and whenever they like actually have a question about that or they want to talk about Jesus. And so I think they, they get that, you know, scorecard thing going. It's like, I got to tell everybody, you know, shout from the rooftops, you know, mm -hmm. type thing. And it, like I said, it's not a bad quality. It's just one that you, you have to practice and train. And there's times where you need to shout it. There's times where you might be in a mall and have to stand on a table in the food court and just be like, I just want to tell everybody in here how much yeah. that you are loved and Jesus sees you and cares about you. And there's sometimes where you're just going to ride in the passenger seat with, you know, Kodak on the radio and just be chilling and be cool with just riding along with somebody and doing life. Yeah. I'm talking in person, baby. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> He's saying real no, life, is, not baby. on the radio. Yeah, yeah, I need to me. It's looking up, bro. Yeah, that reminds me of the quote. I forget which of those OGs wrote it. They said, um, preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words. Yeah. And what they're trying to say is like, let your life be the message, right? Apostle Paul says, be living letters. I think Moody said out of 100 people, one will read the Bible and 99 will read that person, mm. right? It's like, if you're living it, if you are it, people just, they recognize real, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah. It's so funny you quote that. The, uh, I say the for D.L. Moody, kind of on that quote, they, yeah. 99 will read the Bible, you said? No, I don't, no 99 I don't will read that one person. Okay, so read. one person will read the Bible. Yeah, and 99 will read that person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I usually say hard. like, uh, people don't read the Bible, they read Christians. Mm. And I think, uh, I mean, you guys have a really important role because so few young people go to church. Um, yeah, absolutely. And so yeah. few young people uh, get to ever hear a pastor. And unfortunately, um, mm -hmm. we're in a time right now when like most of the Christian leadership, if you look at Christian leadership is seen as like guys and like Will, who's a pastor or guys like me, who's like a nonprofit ministry, people that like, we almost have to love God. Like, like if he stopped loving God, he could not do his job Fire. anymore as a pastor. <laughs> like I kind of have to love God. Yeah, like bro. if I told my boss, like, hey, I, I, I want to do what we do, but I, I have stopped loving God. 
I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's a part of like, we almost have a pressure to, <laughs> to love God. Not to say, I mean, it's got to be sincere, but there's something there of like, when people see us love God, they're like, of course you love God. You have to love God. Yeah. Y'all, it costs uh, something. Those, anyone it's who's true. got a job in culture, a job in the world. And there's certain industries where even to love God, even to be a Christian, even it's almost immediately like to be almost labeled potentially like a hate group. Um, it's like this mm -hmm. message of love has turned into a group of hate in some people's mind in certain industries in the world. And so... I think it's so important that creatives, Christians that are in culture, they are in industries outside of the church where it does cost you to love God, that you guys are like the missionaries in a lot of sense. Like yeah. you will reach, especially in the next generation. Mm -hmm. Like if seven, I, I know with for millennials, it was seven out of 10 young people dropped out of church once they went into college. So like seven, almost majority. This thing, I always <laughs> like to think of it this way is like, if seven out of ten are leaving the church, that's like getting a report card. And when we were young, and if you got a report card, and you came home, you're like, "Mom, I got a 30. Like, I got a thirty on a grade. We would not be hanging that report card in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Like, they would be like, something has gone like wildly wrong. You need to get tutoring. Yeah. We need something's got to change." Um, though, you guys are reaching those those seventy percent that are outside because though all those young people like they're not going to church. They are listening to podcasts. They are watching movies, watching TV. A lot of them, I mean, they can't avoid the creative process. Um, I don't know what y'all think about this. I was talking to him yesterday. I love country music. Um, a lot of people are always shocked by that. He <laughs> has said he's never listened to a full country song. Wow. Um, really? That's where we're, wow. we're kind of similar is that Bro. we can appreciate rap and yeah. hip hop, but we also see the beauty of country and it, it's not just the twang and the, I'm not saying I don't like country. I just nah, like, I'll, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you the right track. We'll put you on game <laughs> I, on I feel country. like I have almost uh I feel like I have almost gotten a master at this point in getting people to start <laughs> oh, listening to country who do you start music. With? Honestly, I and I, I hate this because it's come so popular now. <laughs> Morgan, dude. Yeah, I think so. Because think so. because people actually like like the sound of it and it's actual like good lyrics and stuff yeah. like that. So I feel like I've almost taken it upon myself to like be like, let me give you three songs to start. <laughs> I got John Do Rush you know, on country I don't music. Know who Do Morgan you, is, you don't know Morgan Wallen I know Morgan is. Freeman. Yeah, so oh, similar. Gosh, yeah, both nice voices. I had a. Well, but let me let me country say so it's like music in my opinion especially when you're in middle school high school and college the lyrics of the day like influence yeah, almost it. how you like mourn mm -hmm. after a breakup like mm -hmm. how many guys got into country music they were like i never listen to country i make fun of country i did and then you go through a breakup the hard Boy. one and then they're like all this song's kind of speaking to me. Yeah. Like, I was making fun of how it was... Rascal Flatts, baby. Exactly. Oh, my exactly. God. Dude, dude, what hurts Never the most... Never be long <laughs> Let me see. What I hurts the most one. really was dude. one of the, <laughs> the first <laughs> one. Yeah. That dude. album. <laughs> dude, I wish you knew what we're talking about, bro, because we are going to put you on the country music. Start karaoke <laughs> right now. But, but these country songs, like, I, I was telling him last night, it's like, R&B... It used to be like at least it kind of if you went through a breakup, Mary J. Blige or Mariah Carey, yeah. there would be a little bit of like these lyrics help you kind of go through your emotions when you're not listening to sermons, you're not in the word of God, you got no like yeah. anchor. Uh, music does that for this next generation uh -huh. in a lot of ways. So it's very important what music is out there and what music we're putting in our ears and 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 what we're watching. But I just think of like how even the R&B shift to today is like R&B, though it's not perfect, definitely is not. Um, yeah. It was definitely, but it'd be like guys that were like, I'm sorry, baby, like I messed up and uh, would you take me back? It'd be like, I'm going to do better. Now the songs, there is not really that much R&B. It used to be true love, like yeah, I yeah. love you, uh, let's get married. Now it's like. Yeah, now it's just sex and be. That's yeah, all it is. Yeah, it's and both ends. It's yeah. like the guys are using the girls and now I've never seen, heard so much like the girls are using the guys like I don't need you, but I'll use you yeah. both ways, and I think that's really influencing the next generation. So, in a lot of ways, like I love y'all's thoughts on how important is it for Christians and culture to see themselves as missionaries. Yeah, it's almost just like taking a class, but where the 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 professor is singing the textbook to you because huh. it's it's about like inputting knowledge in your head. That's like you, you it and you listen to music. You're like, that is how I feel. Mm -hmm. That is exactly how mm -hmm. I feel. But I didn't have the words to yeah. understand that yeah. or like the emotion. And it's like, 
ah, and it hit hard in the bridge. And it was like, that's exactly how I'm feeling when I say this. Yeah. Same thing whenever people walk into Christianity. I see that one of the first things that, that becomes a habit is like throwing on a playlist. Like I have a buddy who, who long story, was an atheist. And then I, uh, I, I baptized him in a Las Vegas um, bathtub above a casino. And uh, he, a few days later, he's coming into work. And uh, he gets to my office. And he's like, "Have you ever heard of this um, group? They're called like Beth Bethel or something like that." Yeah. And I said, "Yeah." He was like, "Dude, I just as soon as I got in the car this morning, I was trying to find music because I didn't really." He was like, "I don't really know anything." So, and that was that, dude. Mm -hmm. It was like he was looking for something that had more words to what he had in the moment that would kind of lead him into it, like where he was going. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to hear um, from y'all and just kind of in closing from each one of you guys, what is like your favorite story of the opportunities you get to be around those far from God, maybe even hurt by church, um, even maybe angry at Christians and because of the way you live and because of what you do, including you will, mm -hmm. I would like you get to like your favorite story of like, man, if it wasn't for me actually kind of doing this, um, I wouldn't get to have these kind of opportunities to like love on this person, share a word that's timely, see this transformation. Zach, if you don't mind kind of starting. Yeah, dude, that's what's up, man. Uh, when you talk about impacting somebody from a freaking place of like, yo, got a story about it. I mean, I have thousands of different stories, but one of my favorite stories is two of my favorite stories, and I'm not going to share both of them, but one's with Devin Desjardins, and he was a homie who God, I just saw something that he did. God just told me to hit him up, hit him up randomly, and I was like, yo, like, I'll pay you $80 to talk to you about this shirt that you just posted, mm -hmm. and he was like, what, you some sort of sugar daddy? I was like, bro, look at the gram. I got pictures with my family, dog. Like, just a freaking one. Just, just check it, dude. You know what I mean? He checked it out. He's like, all right, dude, you look safe. So <laughs> he hit me up. We talked from his, he was driving from San Francisco, from, he was driving from LA to San Francisco. We talked for two hours and he was going down there to take a, a $200,000 sales position or something. I don't know. And from the time that he left, the time he was there, he, we had many tears, many, uh, many conversations, but I'd ask him, I was like, yo, dude, I don't know if you believe in God. And I don't usually take a bold stance like this, bro, but straight up, God told me that you're going to impact culture and you're going to create uh, the most amazing paintings that culture is going to connect with and your voice is going to be heard. And he, in the way that it would, you know, there's a lot to this conversation, but five years later, dude, he's selling, he's making millies, dude. You know what I mean? The dude's killing it. So look him up, Devin mm -hmm. Jardin. And then Brock England, the homie that, uh, he was practicing to be a shaman, dude. I don't want to steal all of his story, you know what I'm saying? But like, bro, when you're hanging out with people who are sipping on ayahuasca and stuff, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, it's a very interesting narrative to be yeah. able to connect with. And so, I mean, and I could go into a lot of names that are running culture and music that are in these ceremonies. So it's like, you know, whenever you talk about these different things, I think there's more alignment with music even there. But it's like uh, with, with Brock, like homeboy, he saw a vision of me and him doing life together. He didn't know what that looked like. And he shared it with me. And I was like, bro, let's let's see what happens. He started coming around. He was doing sacred geometry. And I was like, bro, you're more original than a sacred ge geometric form. Like, let's tap into something that is going to be so aligned with, with the spirit of God, dude. You know what I mean? With something that's inside you, that's so deep inside of you, that allows your originality to be such a message that people will connect with because it's so created and crafted through something that you were so dependent on that faith aspect I talked about with the creator, with God. And, uh, you know, we went on that walk seven years ago. So we've been walking for seven years and he's now working on like a pain that's going to take him thousands of hours that I think will be one of the best pains the world's ever seen. So it's just when you talk about walking with people's stories, all these types of things, man, I think that it's just my, mo my the most exciting moments that I have are the ones where I feel like I've heard God's voice so solid and the and people respond to what I'm hearing in such a profound way. You know, it's good. yeah, I've I've been a lot of a lot of uh, cool opportunities um, around people, and you know, sometimes they're they're people that are celebrities, and sometimes it's just like a a random drug dealer. Honestly, that I've just been allowed to be in like the same room with because of something that I have, um, and just being able to like be in those rooms, but exist as Trent and just be me and like love people has been 
incredible. I don't, I have like a lot of people that come to my mind, but mm. I'm uh, just for sake of time. It's just, it's been really cool. A lot of people like in the music industry is one of those in, in the hip hop music industry. And yeah, every time I kind of walk away and I'm just like, God, how the heck mm. is a farm boy from South Georgia that grew up, mm. you know, on a tractor, like able to be sitting in a room right now, like, having this conversation like it just it doesn't make sense man but it's like those things that god trusts you with i i think it's very healthy to always be like why the heck am i here you i mean know? i think that's the question you ask when you're faithful a lot is god how did i end up here yeah and it's like every day of faithfulness leads to a question of like i guess you trust me because i think it's a lot of people like how did i end up here and why did you choose me yeah yeah, a hundred percent, bro. Thank y'all for joining. I mean, even in this conversation, I realize how much uh, more and more like how versatile you guys are and artists, creatives are. Like, uh, I think the word that comes to mind when it comes to like, I'm always thinking on a missional lens of like, how do we reach the most lost generation our mm. nation has ever seen, probably? And you got is the word access. Uh, like, artists get access. Like, mm. the people you yeah, are around Thanks. is nice. like. Um, <laughs> just people that aren't um, going to probably invite me around. And even if I am, I'm not going to blend in as well. And like you're, there's a credibility and there's a reputation. There's a people will talk about art um, and not even know they're talking about maybe something that's so gospel influenced and God influenced. And yeah, yeah you guys just get a lot of access. It's so crucial that uh, y'all walk closely with God. Uh, you submit to him. Um, you, you love people so well. I think y'all uh, artists, ironically, yeah, y'all wear your heart on your sleeve a lot. Yes. Yeah. I know pain also plays a lot into a lot of artists' creation and in their mission and yeah. their heart for people. Um, so thank y'all for like continuing to go through... Um, yeah, even lastly, the judgment too. I think it's one of those things that the church can see like, man, the lifestyle y'all live, the people you're around, the why are y'all with Zacchaeus? Uh, yeah. uh, why, how'd you, why, why would you even hang out with him or like go to dinner? Or like, hey, that the dinner looks a little too nice. Uh, Zacchaeus' dinner. And so there's a whole other part. There's <laughs> yeah. a part two I know to this. There's a lot it's of just like hitting of me. the access, then you're in circles that we're just not in. And so just know, yeah, we kind of see that you're, you're teaching us a little bit about how important it is for y'all to walk with God, serve him well, and have the support of the church, not just uh, the critique of the church or the curiosity of the church. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you don't mind praying for those that are, uh, whether they like love artists better or they are an artist and like, hey, y'all, these guys, out of everyone you brought in, you keep bringing in these pastors or these speakers or these authors, but these guys connect with us. Just pray for those guys. Yeah, absolutely. Well, dear God, thank you so much for this moment. Thank you so much for all these guys uh, and the ability to even come on here and talk about this and to share thoughts and to have a safe space, God. Thank you for each individual creative that's sitting here and what they bring to the table. And um, Father God, we just pray for the people that are watching. And there's just two specific things I want to pray that people will really walk away thinking how can I how can I love people people better where they are how they are right now and two just for for open minds towards people that are in me and Zach's position where we are very in the world um, and that there is patience for that that there is a grace to understand that and Father God, at the end of the day, we just pray that um, we help grow your kingdom. Um, thank you for what we get to do and the people we get to do it with. And we'll never take that for granted. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So thankful to have you guys join the podcast. I can't stress enough. Again, if you're, I mentioned this in the podcast and I just think it's so crucial, especially for you that are listening, who are outside of the church. You didn't go to seminary. You you didn't go to a Bible school, but you love Jesus and you love people is we find ourselves in a time when the next generation may not go to church, but they are listening to music. And that means the lyrics of that music. They are watching movies. And that means they're seeing what relationships look like what success looks like they're they're watching these pro athletes just think of yourself when you were young who inspired you and for a generation that's not in the word of god and they're not among people of faith then we want to steward those spaces as well and i'm just thankful for leaders like zach and trent who are doing that but also i want to encourage you that we're thankful for the work that you guys are doing to uh, be a faithful redemptive presence in our culture and so 
in that, I just want to say, y'all, if you can, please uh, go onto the podcast before you end this, pull out your phone and actually like, hey, rate the show, maybe write a quick review. And uh, a big, big one is we would love to gather these young leaders from across the nation. We are shaping up for more and more speakers that are joining us, more and more conversations that we're going to have. But I'm telling you, we'll be if you've never been to Nashville, in the heart of Nashville, there's this little country Times Square, I call it, called Broadway. And thousands of people are on Broadway and we'll be right there 10 seconds away on Broadway for the first ever Next Gen Summit. We are gonna have around a thousand young leaders from across the nation. And so if you're hungry for the Lord, you have a posture of wanting to see revival, or if you just wanna find some friends that are pursuing the Lord and navigating the culture today, then come jump in with us at the Next Gen Summit. I'm so expectant, so prayerful. And if you go to nextgensummit.com and that's N-X-T-G-E-N summit.com, you can find out more, get signed up and join us before uh, the limited number of a thousand spots are taken. So in closing, just want to say this has been an amazing first season. You guys have jumped in. I've gotten so much great comments and feedback and just stories that you guys have shared. And we're excited for next season. This is the closing of this chapter. And already just this week, me and Will have done some incredible interviews with some different leaders from Lecrae to Jonathan Pakluda, Joel Mutamale, all these different leaders that we're excited to bring to you. Make sure that you subscribe so you get notifications when we jump back on and uh, we'll be dropping some more episodes before the year is over and we'll see you guys in November. Mm-hmm.